Hi everyone, this is Sharon. Um, today I'm gonna go over basic music reading. Um, what I'm gonna show you is how the strings of the lyre correlate to the music that you see on a page. Um, the reason I'm doing this video is I was talking to someone about learning the lyre and how it's hard for her because she doesn't know how to read music and she prefers to, um, to, to go and learn by numbers and, you know, because reading music is too complicated, too hard, and she just, she doesn't think she can do it. So um, I'm hoping that this would be an encouragement um, to other people that are maybe thinking that way because reading music um, opens up to me, opens up a whole world of possibility. If you know how to read music, there is so much more um, music and songs that you can learn and play. So I really do encourage, you know, just basic reading music. I am not talking about learning uh, the whole music theory um, because there is so much out there about it. And that part is complicated and it is hard and we probably if you're starting as an adult learner you probably don't have the time to go through all the music theory but definitely basic reading music is I believe should be a must for reading now I know when I got my liar um, I got two of them so I got two different versions of something that looks like this it's a little booklet and um, what the manufacturing does is they uh, put the numbering system, maybe if I put it closer, you could see it better. See the numbering systems on the liar. It's a little bit back to front for you. I know that, I apologize, but that's just how the, how the camera works. And then towards the back, they have a few music that they give you to learn and it's all by numbering system. Um, now, the thought that to learn to play an instrument by numbers to be easier than what it is to be learning to read the notes on the music um, and that it is a lot less time, I would beg to differ. And I know by saying that I probably will get a few upset people, but um, you know, this is kind of gonna be a challenge for you to really consider that learning the music does not take longer than reading and learning this numbering system here. And it's not as complicated as this numbering system. Um, and I'm hoping that this um, little kind of demonstration would at least, you know, kind of show that to you, that is, that is my hope. So I'm gonna share my screen with you now. If you just give me a minute here. I'll just make this larger so you can see it better. Now this, this sheet, um, this picture along with the notes on it is available on the website, learningthelyerharp.com. Uh, it's free. You can take a copy of this along with a little bit of explanation. But what you can see what I've done here is I've taken um, your regular 16 string lyre here. Um, this, this 16 lyre, um, fortunately for us, has the, uh, the letters engraved on it. So it starts with the uh, low G, there's your middle C right here, and it goes up to your high C and then a little bit, um, a little bit more, uh, more notes right there. So when you look at, you, when you look at the, the, um, the, uh, the notes on the, on the page, your playing ability for this liar um, is really narrowed down. So that's good news for us that plays this instrument because the amount of things we need to learn now really is within that range. So we don't need to, to learn how to play and read all of this ones over here um, or all of the ones that are up here because we can't play them anyway. 
So it really just narrows that gap for us. So, um, and it makes it so much easier. Now the musical alphabet, there's only really seven letters. It starts with, um, it starts with A, B, C, and it goes up to G and then it repeats again, but that's not really how we read it because our landmark for music starts with, with C. So it goes with the middle C. So really, if you think about it this way, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, that's, that's pretty much your, your uh, your one octave and it just repeats after that so if you um look at here from from your low, lowest c right here which most music really starts here it goes from the lowest c to, th to this low c and then to the middle c high c and you know the highest c right there so that's that's how that's how the the keyboard is structured, and most songs that we play really are con are, are contained within the keyboard. But we don't even need to, to learn all of the songs in the keyboard because we have our lyre, and our lyre, based on which ones we purchase, is really narrowed to those strings. Um, and because there's only seven letters in the alphabet that makes it so much easier for us to learn those notes because it just repeats. Now, on a piano, which is why, on a keyboard, which is why I put it on here, it's easy, easy to learn because, because there's landmarks. So the C is a landmark and the F is a landmark right here because C comes right before the two black notes and the F comes before the three black notes. And so for piano, piano, pianists or um, keyboardists, it's easy for them to know where the notes are because of those landmarks. On a harp, it's the same thing. It's easy for harpists to know what that is because on the strings, uh, the, the uh, C strings are usually red and the F strings are usually blue or black and I've seen them purple, so it could be purple. So those are your landmarks. So when you're reading the music, it's easier to see. Now on the lyre, if your lyre strings are metal, then you don't have, you don't really have that. You can't see it. Um, but the good thing about lyre is that you don't have as many strings as a harp. Um, so there's sm smaller harps and, you know, I think the smallest harp I've seen has, I believe, 15 strings. So even in those ones, um, it would be easier to remember where the strings are. But if you want the landmark, you could do what I did with my uh, my lyre. I think I shared this with everyone in, in, a, in a video before where I went ahead and painted the tips of my tuning pins. Um, C's are red and I painted a, about a, up to an inch down. Um, with red and the F I painted blue and the same thing with the strings about up to an inch down. You could go lower if you want, but I wouldn't go that much lower because then it might be annoying for you after a while because you really just need it there just to get you going, get you started, get you familiar with all the strings are. But once you have that muscle memory, you don't even need that anymore because when you touch your instrument, you will know exactly where to place your fingers because you played it so much. So your, your uh, muscle memory kicks in. So just as, you, as a beginner, um, if you need a landmark, you could copy the, the um, coloring system that, that a harp does because that for me really, really do help. Um, what I'm gonna show now, I'm gonna change my screen. So now that same layer that we have right now, I put it on its side. So you could see where the notes are. Again, the musical alphabets, there's seven letters, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then it starts all over again. And the same thing for, for um, the bass clef. So the, 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 um, the G clef um, is, is really where all of the melody goes. Sometimes we borrow some of the notes from the bass clef or the, or the uh, F clef we call it, um, to play the melody. But in most cases, you know, you would use the bass clef for the harmony and for using the chords that were, that's where um, we, build, we build those um, harmonies from. So C, D, E, F, G. And the other reason too, what I, why I think reading, um, learning to read the basic notes is really a must is it because if you want to start playing songs by chord, you need to know how to build those chords. 
And the way to build those chords is knowing where the notes are and where the keys are. So that's why reading this basic alphabet, musical alphabet is really um, important and it's really useful. So um, this is how it looks like lying down. So you would see, you know, the uh, staff, there's two staff, the, um, and, and they're made of um, lines and spaces. There's five lines to a staff and there's the four spaces right there. And, you know, depending on where the notes land and the notes could have a tail on it. It could have like, you know, um, a tail going up or a tail going down. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's just the way uh, we write them because, so that it's it's not so cluttered. These are showing whole notes here, but if I had a if I had a quarter note, it would have a stem going up or a stem going down. So um, you could you could see that right here the lines um, C, E, F, sorry E, G, B, D, F, and A on the um, the treble clef are on the line, and you have D, F, A, C, E, and G. Um, are on the spaces. Now, here are the notes again. This time, these are all in the, um, the treble clef or what we call the G clef. We call it the G clef. And again, this is um, a good thing for us to note because it also becomes a landmark when we're reading the actual piece of music. This is called the G clef because, the, the, because this line over here, the second line on the uh, treble clef is the G line. So the note that goes on, on this line here will always be the G. And it's called the G clef because as you could see here, this G part here, it looks like a G. This, this curve here is hugging that line. So when you look at that one and you could see that that's, you know, you remember that that's the G line, any notes that goes in there is the G. And every time you have a landmark, it's easier because you, you would know the notes before and after um, those, those notes. So if this is a G, then what comes before the G in the, in, in the uh, alphabet is F. So we know right away that this is F and what comes after a G is A. So we know that that's an A, and after an A is a B, and after a B is a C. So it just becomes really easier when we're reading, when we have a few landmarks. Another landmark that we see um, on, on the, uh, the, um, the treble clef is your middle C. The middle C is always down here, and it always has one line um, right across it. Like it's an imaginary line. So right there. It's not part of the, um, the treble clef lines. It's a line on its own, and that's how you would always see a C. Even if it is a whole note, a quarter note, an eighth note, if it's, if it's down here in this position here with that little line across it, it will always be a C. And when we have C, then we always know what comes after a C in the alphabet, A, B, C, D, and then E, and then F. So really, if we just if we just try and remember a few notes on the on the on the staff, it will really help us to read the notes that much more easier because we're just looking at the alphabet and we're just kind of thinking about the notes before and after it. If even if we could just remember one or two notes right after that, um, the note that we remember. So if it's an F that we remember. We know that what comes after an F in the alphabet is G, and then A, and then B, and then it repeats again, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So that's really how easy it is. And because we, we, remember, we remember the letters um, and, and the sequence of the letters, it's easy for us to, you know, to, to now, read a sheet of music and go, yep, that's an A, that's a B, that's a C, that's a D, and now I can read it. I know where that is. And because we know where the strings are on our lyre, how it correlates on, on our lyre, then we know which string to play. Just showing the notes, the notes again, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then it starts again, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So, and that's, that's the way it goes. Um, depending on the range that you're in, on the, uh, on the middle C, um, 
see the the uh, the fourth octave that's where you would find the middle C. So sometimes you would see the music as C4. C4 means the middle octave. Um, the C is on a line. On C5, the C is on a space. And then, and then this these notes here would have um, the fives right underneath, right, right, right beside them. If you are looking at a at your tuner, it just it's just really de depicts what octave it's in. That's what that is for. This is the numbering system that we get. So, and this is why I say that it's, it's, just, it's just as easy for us to remember the letters of the, of, the, of the notes as it is to remember the numbers of the notes. Because if we're looking at, um, at, at reading this, the C on, a, on the, um, on, on the uh, octave is your first note, the D is your second note, the E is your third note, and your fourth and five and six and seven and so on, and then it starts all over again. So you could see right away, it's exactly the same system, except now we're using the numbers versus the lettering system. So how it's easier or harder really depends on just the way you think about it and just the way you look, up, you look at it because it's just as easy to remember seven letters as it is to remember seven notes. Now you will see now that there's dots on top of these letters, on top of these numbers here. Now, this is the way the numbering system goes on the liars. This is, I got this information straight from the book that came with my liar. I have two of them and, and they do it exactly the same. If you play the kalimba, this would actually be, um, um, be familiar to you because they write it in the same way. Um, so right now, your 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 um, middle C or your your fourth octave here has no has no dots. That tells you that it's C four um, or or the um, the middle C position. When you get to the higher note, they give you a dot depicting that now you're on the next range. And then if you get the the the, um, the two dots above it, it means now you're even in the higher range. So if you have if you have a lyre that has a few notes above the C then you would get those, those few notes there would have double lines. And if you go below the C, um, say for your bass clef, it would have an, a dot right below it. I'm not showing this on here right now because I don't have the bass clef. I'm just showing it on the, um, on the uh, staff. So here is a good, um, a good thing that's taught by pretty much I don't know, every, every music teacher that I could think of um, has something like this or something similar where it makes it easier for them to, um, for the learner and for their students uh, to remember the names of the, the letters of the alphabet and where they are. So as you could see here, very, very popular. I'm sure um, most of you have seen this before, the spaces on, on, the, um, on the G clef or the treble clef has the word face. If you spell them out, it would read F A C E. So to remember those and, and so they become your landmark, you just remember the name face. And once you know the name, the, you know the um that that landmark right there, now it would be easy to you for you to say, so what comes before F? E. What comes after F is a G. A, what comes after A is B. And then C, what comes after C is D, E, and what comes after E is F. So that's how easy it is because if you choose to, uh, to, to use the spaces as your landmark, all you have to really remember is the word face. Now, if, if, um, if that's too hard for you, you could use the names on, on the uh, lines as your landmark. So on this one here, the, again, this is very popular. Every good boy does fine. So you start with um with E for every good boy does fine, and it goes the same way. What comes what comes up before an E? Well, it's always a D. It doesn't matter if it's up here or down here. What comes what comes before an E is always a D, 
what comes before E is a D. What comes after, um, what comes after a G is A. Whether you're here or here, it will always be A. And what comes before G is F and F. That's why I say it's really easy, especially when you can remember such an easy, um, easy saying. Sorry, I can't remember the name of what, what, what do you call this now, but you can even come up with your own. Like right now it's here, all, all cars or all all cars eat gas. <laughs> That's some, somebody made that up or good burritos don't fall apart um, for the base clap. That's easy to remember. And you can choose something fun. You don't have to go every good boy does fine. You can come up with your own. Um, this is another way to look at it. Again, this is the most popular one. That's why I have it on here. And you can, you can find this. You could Google it and find it everywhere. And it's just how, how to read it. Um, in in this way more more vertical and horizontal horizontal and vertical way but again this is just really to use as a landmark i did this come every good come every good boy deserves fudge always on on this one that i made and i just did it uh, a few minutes ago i even went as far as using the middle c starting with the c because it's also on the line and i don't want to forget it so i go come Every good boy deserves fudge always. So now I kind of like I I included a much bigger range than just your than just the first few parts. And then I go don't on for the spaces I put don't forget all coffee ethics or etiquette. I don't really know if there's such if there's any coffee etiquette. But it doesn't matter. You could just make it up. <laughs> Whatever makes sense to you, if you want to make something funny or if you want to make something um, you know, more serious, it's up to you. But just, but just think, of, think of a sentence um, that can make this learning um, much more memorable to you and use it as a landmark so pick one you could you could start you could start by learning and picking the um picking picking the um the the names or the, the notes on the spaces as your landmark at first see how that goes and then try it uh, a few weeks later try it with using the names on the of the notes on the lines as your landmark. So whichever one you want to start with, and you know, you will find that as soon as you do this, after a few weeks, you would really get to know the names of the notes on the music sheet. And again, like with everything, it comes with practice. We didn't learn to read um, novels right away. We first had to learn the alphabet at first. So we learned, you know, that I think it's 27, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> you, can, you can correct me later or whatever. Um, you know, there's only so many, so many alphabets. So you learn how to, to um, read A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You learned how to recognize it. And then later on, you learn to put two letters together and make up a word. Maybe your first word uh, that you read was up. And then you you added the the letter C, and now you have cup, you know, or something like that. But first, you have to learn the basic, which is an, which is the letters in this case the notes, and then you learn a series of notes. So it could be that you memorize C D E F right away, so that's your landmark, and you know that you know that position um, right away, uh, whether it's on the middle or the high or the low uh, low octave, and then later on you could learn the next the next four notes above that, so G A B and then back to C. So that recognizing those will now help you to learn just like you would reading a book. Now that you've learned words. You could read a whole sentence. So it might be that you're learning note by note by note at first, and then later on you could look at a bar and you know exactly how to read that bar. And then after you've learned how to read the notes on one bar at a time, you could read four bars at a time 
and you can read ahead or you could maybe even read up to eight bars at a time. Um, sky is the limit. You know, most most music, uh, especially beginning music sheets, really only has four bars at a time per line, but some have six and some have eight. So it's up to you, but really, really start small because that's the beginning, that's your basic. And when we cover the basic, it's the foundation. And when you have the foundation solid, you can build on that foundation. So I'm hoping that this is really useful to you because the next, the next step after you've learned how to read the music is building on that foundation and learning how to build chords. And this is really what I wanna cover maybe a bit later on is how to build chords because this is what gives um, the melody that we learn that harmony. Someone asked in our face group, you know, I need help to, to, to know what to do with my left hand when I'm playing my lyre. Um, and really what you need is to learn harmony with your left hand. And we play the chords um, in most cases with our left hand. And sometimes we add a bit of it to our right hand to build that harmony. So as when you've learned the, the, the basic of how to read the notes, you could build on it and build on it and build on it. And that helps you to become better and better and better as you, as you go along. So I hope that this tutorial has been useful to you, at least to show you that it really doesn't take more time to learn how to read the alphabet, the musical alphabet, than it is to remember the numbers because they are one and the same. It's just really the placement of where the notes is on the music. And if you're um, learning how to how to play the lyre and you have you have uh, the music there and sometimes they they say F G A B C and then you have to now think of it as in numbers. You're actually adding another step into the process. Whereas if you just learn to read the notes on the music and a lot of beginner uh, books, they even write down the name of the notes right on there and it's easier to learn. And once you, you learn to read that, you, you can now cut, cut back that process of translating the alphabet into the number system. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, if you like this tutorial, please comment below. If there's any um, anything that you would like to see in future, let me know. I'm happy to uh, um, uh, do a video tutorial on, on, on all of them if it helps the liar community. Um, I appreciate all the feedback. I appreciate all your help. Please subscribe and do join our Facebook group. It's a really a good friendly community and we support each other. We help each other out. and it's it's just um, a nice family friendly atmosphere. So that's it for now. Thank you for tuning in and happy playing.